This video was sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is one of the top VPNs you can use. With one subscription, you can install and run Surfshark on any number of devices in your home at the same time. Yup, that's right, unlimited privacy and protection on any of your devices. Everything from your phone to your PlayStation and of course your PC. Listen, don't get scammed by any of the other VPNs claiming to be free. Nothing is free, especially privacy. But with Surfshark, you're protected with all RAM servers. Meaning if someone comes to pull your data, all the information goes bye-bye. And that's not all either. You ever get a notice on a YouTube video that says restricted in your country? That's called being region locked. It applies to Netflix, Disney Plus, and Hulu too. With Surfshark, you can enjoy all your favorite shows and more with just the click of a button. And best of all, it's practically free. That's right, I got a promo code for you today. And if you go to surfshark.deal slash plagued and enter code plagued, you're going to get an extra 83% off and four months free. So what do you got to lose? Nothing, because it's a 30-day money-back guarantee. So try Surfshark for free today. Enter code PLAGUED at checkout at surfshark.deal slash plagued and get even more free time with the best VPN available. Have fun online, but stay safe, because the world's a scary place, as you and I both know. And that's why I trust Surfshark. Welcome back to the ultimate not safe for life iceberg. Things are going to get intense from here on out as we move on to tier 2, so I hope you read the disclaimer and got your buckets ready for your vomit and your tears as we descend the, um, tears. Before we begin, and I would like to just get my, ah, sell out, uh, you get money, mumbo jumbo out of the way, uh, because I'm so money hungry, I can't, like, control myself. And all it is, as I'm saying, just in the description and pinned down below, you'll find all my social media as well as my Patreon, and there you can get access to all the Iceberg tiers early, way before they release on YouTube, as well as over eight hours of bonus content, including docu-series uh, that I made called The Infamous Four, and a bunch of other content that I can't post on YouTube, including deleted videos. I get all salty about it because people bitch that I make money that way, and it's like, well, I don't make money off YouTube. Also, in this little bit of an absence of making videos, I was on vacation, and I learned a lot of stuff, and I kind of just came out of a depression doing that, and it was really nice, and I'm super motivated. I'm working on a bunch of stuff right now. And I also realized that I have a passion for jewelry, like, excessive amounts, and that's okay. Um, now I have enough bracelets to be considered, like, an RPG character. Like, these are my magic items. Anyway, let's dive in here. If you haven't watched Tier 1, you can go ahead and do that. That's also going to be pinned down below in the comments. And, uh, yeah, that's all there is this day. Let's get going. I think this was one of the ones that I had the most questions about when I teased the tiers for the iceberg, and it's like, okay, well, why is this on here? And if it's on here, why is it lower than tier one? And that's, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of surprising to me that this many people are sleeping on the Mandela catalog because honestly, especially after Wendigoon's hype up of it, you figure it would have. I don't know, got some credibility, but I mean, I'm going to explain. But the Mandela Catalog is an analog horror series comprising of six episodes taking place in an alternate universe in the fictional Mandela County. Each episode is a part of a series of VHSs that details many things, including the police training videos on how to deal with the alternates, which are like supernatural doppelgangers that plague the residents of Mandela County. 
So they attack the minds of the individual and torment them so badly that they commit suicide and then take over their bodies, or take over their place, rather. Yeah. Why is it on the iceberg? Within the series, it does indeed tell a story, but it also forces you to dive into disturbing themes of suicide, the horrors of religion, all while haunting robotic dialogue walks you through your paranoid anxiety. So why does it deserve its place on tier 2? Well, given its extreme themes of suicide, body swapping violence, and its extremely terrifying delivery to me, makes the Mandela Catalog one of the most disturbing analog horror series of all time, at least in my opinion. And I'm not an expert on the subject, but from what I've seen and what I've dabbled into, holy shit. Regardless of the context you're given when you watch this, you're no doubt going to have some feelings of anxiety and dread. It's uh, very unsettling. It's really about the delivery and the, the imagery paired with it, you know, maybe to some, you know, expected. But I don't view it on that level this to me just it just makes me feel things <laughs> okay it's hard to explain it's creepy as fuck i don't maybe it's just my bias but that's why it's here i generally have always had like some kind of like innate fear for analog sounds if that makes sense like the emergency alert system in the u.s used to scare the fuck out of me as a kid so much so that i considered it a phobia growing up and i've kind of moved past that getting into my late adulthood yeah or whatever the fuck i'm in now uh yeah, that's a weird place to be. But by far, the series is great, and it's a great piece of art and horror, and it sets the bar for how analog horror should be, and how it should be delivered in general, and for it to garner so much views as it did, the hype it's deserved, I, I honestly think... I haven't watched something that kind of naturally unsettling in a very long time. The Mandela Catalog, if you have not seen it, I recommend you do so. I'm trying to do my best not to spoil anything, but... Uh, it's it's hard to elaborate further until you unless you watch it yourself. But watching it on YouTube, it's so simple yet unnerving, and it took me back to when Marble Hornets was new and creepy. Except the Mandela Catalog is it welcomes you in coldly and forces its way into your more primal fears, whether you realize it or not. I I put it in very high regards, and I have a lot of respect for its creator Alex Kister, and I think that it's just simply great. And it shouldn't be overlooked. So, I mean, that's pretty much what I could say without disturbing anything. But disturbing? I meant spoiling. Whatever. But I think that's all there is to say about that. Without spoiling anything, um, hats off to you, Alex. You made a fucking great series. I don't know why people even question where it's at. It's not like I put it on tier 8. I mean, it's not like that's even being offensive. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't think somebody wants their creation down there personally. But... It's just interesting to see on this list, and it's it's because it is not safe for life, and just because it's a piece of art doesn't mean it can't be extremely disturbing. It doesn't have to be gore and death, guys. It's not like, we're not a one-track mind channel, you know? Anyway, let's move on down. Oh, you see it? You see it? Oh, yeah, you bet your sweet bippy we're playing it. But you'll get, some, you'll, get, you'll get warning. Don't worry. You'll get some warning. First, though, let's actually just discuss it. Let's get the meat of it out of the way. So, what is the Russian Brick video? Oh, what's this? A video with a mysterious thumbnail and an unassuming and vague title. Surely this won't induce mental scars. The Russian Brick video is, um, well, it's viral dash cam footage uh, from Russia that... The, what it caught was an event that isn't viscerally disturbing as much as it is an audio thing but it, it's something that i don't know how to explain it it's just really bad a couple was on a highway between azov and sterominskava in the rostov region of russia when a truck driver sped past them the truck was loaded with bricks and a few of them came loose and one of them smashed through the audi a4's windshield striking 29 year old olga gagovich who was in the passenger seat in the face killing her while the video itself doesn't contain any graphic imagery, uh, I myself toted it around as the most disturbing video on the internet for a long time. You will learn why I said this is possibly the worst video on the internet. <laughs> uh, wow, that aged like milk, didn't it? So a fun loophole here on YouTube is that because there's no graphic imagery in the video, I can play it for you. And so, yes, you're going to want to skip forward about 30 seconds if you do not wish to see this clip starting when I say now. Or wait, let's come up with a phrase. Uh, 
Great oogly moogly. Yeah, I'm not even fucking with you. So yeah, three, two, one. Great oogly moogly. Now, in my opinion, there is no point in reacting to it. Like, at that point, it would just be kind of an edgy stunt. I mean, we're already going to do that a little bit here down the iceberg. And for this one, I already played it once. I'm not going to rinse and repeat the same joke in that aspect, at least. Oh, shit. Okay. Put my phone on the wrong thing. But it is what it is, and it's haunting as fuck. Um, it, it, those are the most haunting and painful cries of anguish I think I've heard possibly ever. I mean, uh, don't quote me on that one. I'm sure there's there's worse. Uh, uh, Olga was killed in front of her husband, and the audio of the brick breaking into her face combined with his agonizing screams make this all the more not safe for life. And you don't even need to be there. You don't even need to see gore to understand the horror in the clip. And it's just, it's purely on sound alone and your own psyche alone to make this video what it is. And I've made some errors in this too. I have to say I'm on the topic before in my old video. Um, back then there was, um, I guess there's a second couple in the back seat with their baby. And at the time, I thought it was just the baby and the couple up front, including the woman who died. I was wrong. So, um, yeah. And here, uh, to my knowledge, is the only picture of the aftermath. And there is, of course, no gore. But still, holy shit. Like, imagine being that guy. I mean, I could not. I could not. And I would not. Fuck that shit. I would rather not. That is some Dr. Seuss level shit. Because I would rather not imagine that. The whole video is scarring as hell, and remember, we're only on tier 2, and yeah, I feel it's worth tier 2, because it's not visceral enough, and it's, yeah, it's it's bad, but just because it has infamy doesn't mean it deserves a lower spot on any iceberg. After everything I've seen in my life now, and I know about that exists even just on a reading level, I'm terrified to know what goes deeper, but... Anyway, back to this. So someone dies in this video, and you can hear the moment it happens, and the visceral fleshy sounds, if you've listened close enough, at least that's what I perceive I'm hearing. It's a horrifying way to die, and if you want to get darker and, of course, scientific, the chances of death were, of, like, being instant for her were not 100% there. Brick flew into her face, and it most certainly killed her quickly, but claiming instantaneous death would be a lie, as there's no way to confirm that or not. So... Yeah, uh, you good? We got a long way to go, and I'm sorry, this, this, doing this, I, I call it my job now. Like, you know, it's a weird job to explain, but it, it, you learn a lot doing it. it. Doesn't help that I like to share knowledge. So no matter how you feel about gore or anything disturbing in general, you know this is traumatizing as fuck, and... That's why I used to consider it one of the worst of the worst, and it still is one of the worst videos out there. But let's talk about something I covered on Patreon a while back, but probably could talk about a little more thorough. No, there is no uncensored version. I never did that, thankfully. Oh boy. If you do want to see uncut content I have made, you just got to be a verified member of the Discord. So, so for this one, I got to warn you about a few things. Uh, one thing, more abstract than you'd think... Uh, <laughs> Um, so this particular clip entitled Mr. Hands takes place in the state of Washington in the U.S. And doing research for it in my initial video, I learned that after some reading that many people in these zoo circles literally buy land, move there, buy animals, and um, move their families out there to the country and buy all these animals like horse and livestock and not just to get in touch with the American spirit and commune with nature, but to fuck their animals. And, um... What the fuck? 
So in my experience living in the South and then just doing these videos for so long, I drive past many genuine farms frequently and people have tons of land, which is whatever. You can't just assume shit. But I have to admit, there has been times since I made that video on Patreon that um, I drive by going like, yeah, so why do they need like nine horses? Or why does a residential home with a bit of land have a ton of livestock and a small home and no commercial activity whatsoever? See, I can't help but wonder, uh, ew. So I guess one could call that a negative impact of my job. But on July 2nd, 2005, a man named Kenneth Pinion was dropped off at the Human Claw Community Hospital. Staff wheeled him into the examination room before realizing he was already dead. According to the medical examiner's office, he died of a perforated colon, and it was ruled accidental. So how did Kenneth end up in such a predicament? Well, as I mentioned before, he was part of a circle of zoophiles, so what are those? So people engage in bestiality, so for lack of a better term, they fuck animals. There's a lot to unpack in this whole thing, I'm just gonna let you know now. So let me start with the interesting tidbit about the state of Washington. So in the 1970s, many statutes that have criminalized certain acts in various U.S. states were reappealed generally because they had criminalized some consensual sex acts between adults that were no longer considered inappropriate. Generally because they had criminalized some consensual acts in between adults that were no longer considered appropriate to forbid, appropriate to forbid, like anal and oral sex, a law that was repealed on January 1st, 1976, that had said, Every person who shall carnally know in any manner any animal or bird, or who shall carnally know any male or female person, by the anus or with the tongue or mouth, or who shall voluntarily submit to such knowledge, or who, have, <coughs> or who shall attempt sexual intercourse with a dead body, shall be guilty of sodomy. So instead of reforming the law, then changing it, or whatever asinine political process they'd have to go through, they just decided to just repeal that law as it was. So basically just so that, because they were just so excited to get to the butt play and tongue fucking cloisters that they just didn't want to rewrite the law. I really don't know the reasoning. I don't know. Maybe it's because they wanted the, um, how do I put this? The side effect to take effect, if you will. Because when they repealed the original law, because of that little wordplay there mentioning animals, that made bestiality legal in the state of Washington. Yeah. So Kenneth died because he started what would be his last, but not first, zoophile video, where he was mounted by a horse appropriately named Big Dick. Kenneth himself was no trailer park sicko either. He was respected and a family man, having worked for Boeing for eight years and was previously married with kids. Yeah, um, he moved up to Seattle and um, was, I guess, paying off a mortgage. Oh, and I'm sorry, he moved from Seattle to Oak Harbor, Washington, and was building a new house and barn where he planned to keep a horse. Yeah. Uh, but... Kenneth was into horse dick because he was in a terrible motorcycle accident and resulted in, quote, the loss of ability to experience certain sensations, and what exactly this means is debatable, but given his fascination with large phallic objects and horse dick, one could assume the loss of pleasure is the sensation he uh, was, you know, talking about. So he began exploring more and more extreme butt play. And, but Kenneth was no weirdo. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't, don't say things like that. Don't disrespect the man. He claimed to never have been into horses. He just liked huge dicks. And you know what? That's fine. Nah, I mean, it's not fine what he did. I mean, the statement on the surface is fine. You know, you should be able to say, yeah, I don't like horses, but I sure like big horse dicks or something. I mean, I don't, I don't fucking, I don't know. No, cancel me. This is weird. I can't believe that. They just they 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 were like yeah let's let's name the horse let's name him Big Dick and that's the one that killed him. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I'm allowed to laugh. Fuck you. This is funny. It's bad. I mean, it's bad that I feel bad for the horse. Like Big Dick did nothing wrong. Don't cancel Big Dick. Like he didn't do shit. Uh, Kenneth did even. <laughs> 
<laughs> Kenneth owned a cast replica of his favorite stallion uh, named Strut. Uh, totally not a weirdo, though. And he totally didn't like horses. He just liked big dicks. So don't, don't be fucking hating on Kenneth. Don't be hating on Kenny. Okay, so he linked up with other zoophiles online who were buying and trading horses for bestiality purposes by using horse breeding pheromones. So basically, the horses will, they were so well trained that it, if you assume the position and rub that shit on you, they would uh, mount up. Ultimately, this was what killed Kenneth. And as I've said before, the video plays out like this. Kenneth is joined by an unidentified fellow and a guy named James Michael Tate. Handsome fucker, isn't he? Someone filmed good old Jimmy getting taken to Pound Town by Big Dick. Then, Kenneth got his colon plowed out, and someone randomly jerks the horse off for like a few seconds, and all weird and uh, gross, honestly. And there's no blood or gore present, but shame and confusion for everyone, I assume, who participated, I, at least I hope. And anybody who ended up watching that monstrosity, I saw it a long time ago back when it was going viral, so. And, um... Yeah, it's not exactly on my regular menu of videos I like to go watch, so... No judgment, though, I guess. I, I, I'm, I would totally judge you. Yeah, the clip is disgusting as fuck, and the actions and the story behind it are entirely, entirely disgusting and, well, not safe for life. And that's why it's here. That's why it's on Tier 2, though. And like I said, though, there's no gore, blood, or anything present. It's just, it's just weird. And then you know the story, and you know that guy died. Um, there's a pretty good documentary called Zoo about this and zoo files and shit i actually do recommend watching that it's pretty cool um by pretty cool i mean like it's a cool documentary don't get fucking weird don't get it twisted let's get the fuck out of here like uh... <laughs> oh wait actually i forgot to mention that yeah so do you remember how i said that was his last video so allegedly there's other zoo videos of kenneth pinion and then an orgy video involving him james tate and other buddies they met online <laughs> Oh, God, that's gross. Oh, let's get the fuck out of here. Let's go to something more wholesome. Well, uh... Wholesome as in those... Wholesome for those in the loop who have bonded over the mystique and grotesque nature of this one. Yeah. <laughs> Checkler is one of the most infamous gore videos to ever be uploaded online, and not because it's possibly the first beheading video to ever be posted online, or it's like extremely disturbing nature and audio, which um, I'm sure that actually helps out a lot, but because of the mystery behind it. Checkler was recorded sometime around 1996 during the Chechen War. The clip is about 16 seconds long and details a young Russian conscript with a big boot pinning his head to the ground. A bully knife plunges into his trachea, and then they behead him. Yum! Fun fact about that, tracheal beheadings are done for shock value because they prolong the agony of the person dying. It's really gruesome. The trachea is literally your windpipe, so what happens is you slowly drown in your own blood, feeling every second of your death for about a minute or two. Or until you're completely beheaded. You know, if they decide to decapitate you, that's, that's how it's gonna be. And the audio was also used in the song Testicular Manslaughter by Cattle Decapitation. Now, the mystery of Check Clear. It can be confusing, but in my opinion, it just boils down to two things. Misinfo and ignorance. Check Clear being 16 seconds long seems incomplete for a clip like that. And the way it cuts off is, it genuinely seems incomplete, like there's shit missing in it. And that's because there is. It is an incomplete clip. Now, allegedly, the full version was posted online years back, and of course, through some people claim to have seen it, like, you know, everybody and their brother has. And supposedly, the Chechens berate this guy, they force him into like, a five way fist fight and just torture him and humiliate him as he begs for his mother, and then it leads up to what you see in the clip. However, no confirmation of that being true has ever surfaced, just a lot of evidence pointed towards. Uh, there being a full clip posted at some point, I guess, and whether it was check clear or something else like it, we, we may never know. Um, Justin Wang did a really good deep dive in the check clear. I recommend you guys check that out if you want to know more about check clear. Like, that was the best well put together one I've seen. The beheading was allegedly done by Samir Saleh Abdullah, also known as Commander Katab. Evidence for this is, uh, it took place in Chechnya, and the guy had a big black boot, so really there is no evidence to that, and claims of the identity of the, of the killer being so-and-so are just hearsay, technically. I'm not sure to be a dick, but that's... 
just gave evidence <laughs> to that. No confirmation has been made ever, and any people claiming they have made confirmation, or it's, like I said, or saying it's Katab or anyone else, um, just take it with a grain of salt. Another misconception is that the soldier who dies was Yevgeny Rodionov, who was beheaded at 19 and died a Christian martyr or some shit. This is also not true. Rodionov was captured at 18 and beheaded at 19, and no media of his death exists that I know of at all. Thus, the lesser known title for Czech leader is Unknown Russian Soldier. Yeah, the more you know. Sad thing is, the young man was a conscript, meaning he was under contract and had no choice but to serve. In Russia, I guess that's a thing where you have to enlist in the military for like two years. So at the time there was a war, they deployed your ass. And no matter what your beliefs were, no matter who you were, if you were fit to serve, your ass was serving. And that guy died for it, and he's infamous now. Well, he's not infamous, his uh, recording of his death is. Back to the subject of the killer, it's likely the killer of the soldier was named Salutinian Salutdin Tamir Bulutov. Yeah, no, that was the best I can do. His men actually carried out three separate beheadings around April 12th of 96, one of which uh, was another video known as the Dagestan Massacre, I think. And that's often confused as the full version of Czech Clear, and it's not. It's simply not. Um, members of that group who were questioned claim it was not their leader, though, who did the beheading. And it was another guy who was killed in a mortar strike, which is also likely because, like, much like Al-Qaeda and, like, ISIS, they always claim it's the leader who does the beheading, and they, they always do that. And no matter what, they'll, but somehow, for some reason, this leader, despite being so proud, is always wearing a mask or is just not shown. <laughs> That's kind of interesting, isn't it? The footage itself surfaced because of part of a tactic to lower the morale of soldiers. The Chechens would record these torture and, like, snuff videos, basically, and leave them on the corpses of officers and other people they've killed. That way the Russians find it. And sometimes they were kept and collected and even sold as snuff films across Europe, including Czechlear. Czechlear was also... Chechkur was also bought by a Russian news station as well, and played in full on the news. Yeah, the whole fucking thing. Russia. Seriously, Russia. Only in Russia. Only in fucking Russia. <laughs> My god. Also, if you do some digging, there is a propaganda documentary called The White Book, and it featured additional screenshots of uh, different frames from Chechkur, like the after the beheading and stuff like that. And it's, it's really interesting. i um, not really sure how to get a hold of that personally. But I think it was called The White Book. Um, I could be mistaken on that. I have to look back into it. I don't have like an archive of info on that or something. But let's see what all the hubbub is, all the ruckus. What all has all the kids' jimmies and the rustles these days about a classic piece of gore media. I don't have a cup of tea like I originally planned, but I got this fucking Mountain Dew and it tastes so good. It's like what summer should have tasted like in the 90s, if that makes sense. Or, or does? I don't, I don't fucking know. Kind of tastes like a bomb pop and then a bunch of other just good. I swear there's like notes of Hawaiian punch, but anyway. Let me get my, uh, let me get my headphones on. Okay, it took a minute for me to actually find this one again. I don't I don't know why, but let's uh let's let's take a look. God damn. That is gnarly. God damn, that was fucking gross. Like, the way that the knife plunges in was very... It's like breaking through the rind of a watermelon. Like, that was fucking disgusting. Holy shit. Man, I haven't seen that in a minute. Now, again, people also really, really, really questioned, man, this is paired up next to the Mandela catalog. This is on tier two. We're gonna talk about that too. And the reason I'll have the Peppa Pig headphones is because my kids are sick right now and 
actually sleeping and I'm not going to go in there and wake him up for that. Sorry. We'll do that novelty in another video. So back to why is it on tier two? It's because of its popularity and its uh, length mostly, if I'm being entirely honest. And that, that was a big question on, that was asked too. Like I already said that I think I was asked in making it. And another reason is going to come off edgy, but I mean, it's going to come off edgy as fuck, but it's, it's not that bad compared to other things I've seen. And especially nowadays. And for example, in the oldest dirt, but arguably more popular, the Mexican chainsaw video, uh, you know, which one, you know, which one. After the first guy's chainsaw, the second guy suffers an extremely slow beheading and with far worse like tracheal trauma because this guy has much more audible gasping sounds where air escapes his fucking throat hole and it sounds it just sounds ghastly. It doesn't it just sounds horrible. It sounds ghastly. It sounds fucking bad. Like it's just horrible. And that was around the same not the same time. But it's it's just two pieces of older gore media that could be compared to one another, and arguably that one was worse. And that's why it's here, and that's why I feel it's justified for Tier 2. And also, yeah, it, it makes you question things. How bad is it going to get? Uh, of course, everything is a matter of perspective and opinion, but it's going to get really fucking bad. And if you disagree with the badness of Tier 8, you've got some problems. And there's another beheading, too. I forget where it takes place, but the guy's neck literally whistles as he gasps for air and gurgles blood. And, like, also the next beheading in this uh, tier is, in my opinion, worse in visual effect as well as, well, maybe not visual as much as uh, audio. The audio is way worse, and that's just my opinion, I guess. But for what it is, I mean... <sighs> Not to discredit the fucking horror of Checklear, because even at 16 seconds, the audio and the visual aspect alone makes it beyond not safe for life. It is absolutely terrifying. It is terrible. And it is what it is. I mean, everybody knows what this is now, unfortunately. And unfortunately, that kind of just, you know, simmers down the dramatic effect. So... Let's uh, move on to something a little more traumatizing. Not to try to make beheading stale or anything like that, but to kind of just prove my point about worse audio and beheadings, we're going to move on to Eugene Armstrong, the one I previously mentioned that was worse than Checklear. I mean, I didn't mention it by name, but th this is the one that I said is on the iceberg that's worse. And, I mean, I can think of probably two other ones, too, if you, if you really want the truth. Another one's on this iceberg, way down. It's... Ah, we live in a gross world. Now, the early and mid-2000s were rife with beheadings and horrific gore videos. Uh, why? Because war, you silly goose. And despite mortar strikes, uh, radical beheadings, anthrax, and 762 rounds, you know, the whitest people on Earth found themselves kidnapped in war-torn Iraq, and the world wondered why. I mean, come on. Eugene Armstrong was among three men, the others being Kenneth Bigley and Jack Hensley. A man reads off a statement in a video and with these guys at his knees stating that these men would be killed if Iraqi women were not released from various U.S. prisons. And two days later, a video surfaced with the apparent beheading of Eugene Armstrong, and that was around September 18th of 2004. And then his body uh, turned up shortly after that. The militant group led by Jordanian terror mastermind Abu Masab al-Zarqawi claimed responsibility for the beheading. And again, just saying, they said that Zarqawi did it too. And they would claim and they claimed another person would be killed in less than 24 hours unless the demands were not met. And again, before we even dive into more gruesome stuff, there is no actual confirmation that Zarqawi is responsible for the beheading at all. So just keep that in mind if you're snooty and informational and, and smart and like a scientist or something i mean this guy's credited for beheading everyone uh and i, I possibly even nick berg i mean he was everywhere man like this man traveled private jet to behead but jokes aside and stupid you know snarky comments it's a beheading that i have not seen i haven't seen anything like it from its time from its era if you will and despite its semi-pixelated quality it's so fucking clear 
I'm like a fucking gore wizard. I'm, I like that. I'm taking that. That's on my Twitter now. <laughs> Collecting titles like Pokemon cards, motherfucker. Jack Hensley took a year-long construction job to Iraq to get his family above the water, according to his brother. Kenneth Bigley was basically in it for the same as was Eugene Armstrong, so they went as a group. And, I mean, dedication to your family is one thing, and I guess I'm not in their shoes, and the money probably was fantastic, and I, I don't know. Maybe they were lied to, maybe they were promised it was going to be safe. I, I really don't know. So maybe, yes, I can make jokes all I want about it being un unrealistic and stupid to travel to such a place at such a time, but... If I'm going to reflect and be critical on that, then it's fair to say that they were probably told, hey, you're going to be safe. You're going to be, there's hotels out here. Why the fuck do you think we'd be out here if it's not safe? And I mean, that's haunting, actually. This video, much like any other from the time, had a masked man reading a statement uh, with his buddies surrounding Eugene, who is wearing a prison orange jumpsuit as he sits on the floor. And honestly, this looks a bit, uh, yeah, anyway. What makes this video extra fucked up is how it all plays out, uh, from the start of the beheading until the act itself. I, I guess that's the way I worded that in the script. What the fuck? They grab him by the neck and, like, pin him all at once. It's like they tackle this motherfucker to the ground, and it's a vicious beheading. They grab him, and they're just, like, sawing right above his, like, neck. I, I don't know how to describe it. it it's like... Like, they throw his ass to the ground like a banana peel. Like, it's unbelievable. And they just saw his head off rather slowly and rip up. Like, it's just gross. And you can hear his audible cries and pain and gurgling as it's happening. It's really, really nasty. We're going to watch that too, by the way. And despite the quality of it, what is like, you know, that of a Minecraft game on a toddler's sticky iPad... The visuals are very clear and basically a gurgly waterfall of Hawaiian punch, except it's not Hawaiian punch, it's blood. And, uh, yeah, so let's watch it. You're going to want to skip ahead about, eh, 57 seconds. <clears throat> All right, three, two, one. Okay, well, maybe I remember that a little more dramatically than I thought, but I mean, holy shit. Man, everybody's got watches. So half his head's off, and he's still screaming, by the way. More than halfway off, still screaming. They're going around the back. Had literally was off by a flap, and he was still alive. That's what makes that shit not safe for life. Woo! Then they just zoom in on the severed head. Oh, they're holding it up. Imagine. <laughs> just opens its eyes. A little scared. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, let's get the fuck out of me. <laughs> Ugh. But yeah, that that's that that's that horrible mess there. So I will say if I come off as like not so PC or like something is purely because given the information I have available on this subject, I do not know what the person in the video identifies as, so I'm just gonna do you know the normal safe dialogue basically if that makes sense so i mean no disrespect if i say anything of in any way just kindly correct me and we'll move on from there if i really doubt that'll happen but i just want to kind of give a good disclaimer like you know i'm an ally i'm not a, i'm not a transphobe i'm not homophobic or anything of that nature but for those who may be new watching this i mean just want to let you know that I'm not a bad guy not into that kind of hate so this film was an adult art piece if we're going to be upfront about it starting the lonely girl who is at the start of the video sloppily walking around a derelict house
The film then escalates in its intensity with uh, bees. <laughs> trap bees and the oh oh yeah anyway so yeah it's back to whatever this is and then more spoopy walking and so this is the point where you're wondering well what is this is this what is this like what is this what is this like why is this not safe for life um well this is an adult film and our hero finally stumbles upon what seems to be a skinned horse head and it's in an attic or some shit <laughs> And begins to make out with the fleshy, bloody bits of parts of it, and it's a long fucking tongue. I mean, holy shit. It's like, damn, it's super weird. It's super gross and weird to watch, to be honest with you. And then they begin to slide their ass in, in and around it and use it like a sit and spin. It's a very weird thing to watch. Um, and the real gross part is when they pull out all these strands of flesh, like string cheese or those weird flappy parts of a banana. I don't know what the fuck they're called. Eventually, this escalates into probably what you have guessed already, uh, where, you know, they literally fuck the horse head and the sounds, and I have to admit, are genuinely disgusting. And But all in all, to me, personally, I'm so desensitized, but it's really gross. It is pretty upsetting and nauseating, if you will. And imagining when it came out at the time, in 2006, its concept, and by that, I mean the actual act of using a horse head as a sex object, is quite not safe for life <laughs> i'd say so i'd say that's why it's on here it's one of those videos that if you could smell it you'd puke it's really gross uh the short film or clip like i said came out in 2006 and went semi-viral alongside ones like mr hands and stuff and uh it kind of went under the radar though and now it's kind of faded into to obscurity but it has been asked for me to cover it from time to time and i have recorded it multiple times and then just something happens so now here we are maybe we'll get a full feature on it but i think this should suffice and now I have read some articles and other things here where it says that the head is a cow's head, and that may be true, I'm not sure, but to me that looks like a fucking horse head, and I'm not an expert in skinned livestock heads personally, so uh, yeah, forgive me if there's an error there, but it's a great art piece though from the right perspective, and with that I'd like to give my respects and um, say rest in peace to Alexandria Guerrero who played the lowly girl as they passed away May 31st, 2011 in LA, they were 28 years old. All right, and if you noticed, it's going to be like an outfit change per iceberg tier at least because, uh, yeah, fuck recording all this shit at once. Like, seriously, these are a pain. But you know what, though? This is going to be one of the most fulfilling video projects I've done. So thank you so much for joining me for this, especially those of you who joined me early. So we're going to watch Putrid Sex Object together. Yum. I hope you got your Kleenex ready. I know I don't. I'm just going to use the concrete floor. For what, you may ask? Well, I guess you're gonna have to find out. All right, let's get hot and bothered. Let's, we're t you're tuning in right now for a masterpiece from 2006 called Putrid Sex Object. I'm your host, DJ Plagued Moth, and uh, I'm gonna walk you through a very sensual commentary of this. Ah, what a good font. Faded and barely legible. Honestly, it's just like really deep red on black. Oh, mom? Oh no, this is our protagonist. Well, I don't mean oh no, but... Oh no, it's definitely not my mother. Like, this person's way better than my mom, trust me. Why can't I hear anything? headphones issue. Bees! Ah, it tickles my ear a bit. Okay, so we're writhing in the tub. Or in the attic. 
or on the stair. Like, wow, there's like so many dimensions of me not being able to tell what the hell I'm looking at. That's a pretty ass dress, though. I love the wig, too. Really nice color. This is pretty cool, because a lot of this I don't have to censor. Just all the, uh, parts that are arguably good. Ah, I guess perception. I mean, if you're into this shit, you're into this shit. I mean, I think, as for what it is, from an artistic perspective, it's pretty cool. Damn, though, you know what? Oh, you know what? They're probably heels. I was gonna say, they're tall as shit. Or, I mean, I don't know. I like the suspense building ambience. Oh, how? Oh! Oh, yeah. See, this is where we're gonna have to start blurring things. Uh, it's about to get. Oh, God, that sounds awful in the headphones. I, I feel like. Uh, I feel like PETA would use this video. Do you see what happens to you after you eat a cheeseburger? I mean, I don't know, man. This is getting... Whew. I sound like a fucking dog scratching, but, like, this is hot. What the hell is... What is going on? Oh, is this, is this, where, is this where they... Uh, yeah, this is the sit and spin butthole... Uh, carnival. Oh, I like how it's ultimate suspense sounds with the stringy flesh bits on the butt. That's really gross. Oh. Oh. I'd be scared to hit, like, teeth or something if I was, like, gonna fuck a severed head of any type, actually. Oh, my arm isn't in fr- What am I watching? Oh, this is hot, I think. Maybe. If your macaroni don't sound like that, don't invite me to your cookout. <laughs> I can't even tell you what he's doing. You can just use your imagination. The hell? Oh, Thistle Harlequin. That was the uh, acting name for uh, the lonely girl, I believe, originally. Wow. Wow. What a great piece of art. And I say that with sarcasm, but at the same time, there's some so- Oh my god, there's a YouTube, a Yahoo email, like, holy shit. I say that with a bit of sarcasm, but I also mean it genuinely, too. I mean, all in all, it, it is really grody and fucking weird, but it's, it's an art piece. You know, we, we, we can go all, no, boo-hoo, it's a bestiality, and yeah, I, I think it is, I think. Does that count? It's kind of, at that point, it's kind of like, you know, people eat horse. I mean, they, eat, they do eat horse in some places, apparently, but they eat cow, cow heads entirely. I'm pretty sure I've eaten cow cheek and some really good barbacoa. And to be honest with you, and to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm okay if, if that's what was in there. That shit was so good. So it begs the question, is that bestiality? Or is that the same thing as some sort of skit from American Pie where it's like, okay, this time we're fucking the turkey, you know? Mm. It's not something I would do. Just saying. I don't, I don't, uh, is this a, this, this is another legal disclaimer for you guys. Don't do that. Don't do whatever the fuck you even think you saw. Don't do any of this. This is all fiction. In fact, none of this is real. I'm not real. You're probably not real. So don't worry about it. But yeah, that was putrid sex object. That's what I got on it. That's pretty much the end of it in my thoughts i think it belongs on here mostly because of holy shit if you're actually watching like the uh flappy flesh butt whatever the fuck 
<laughs> That's where I kind of go, uh, yeah, this belongs right here on the Not Safe for Life iceberg. I, you know, I've seen it before, but getting that fresh memory, it's not like I sit and think about these things all day. Uh, you kind of just put it back and forget about some of the shit you see. And... <laughs> <laughs> that was fucking gross. All right, let's uh, let's move on to something that's probably going to be just as bad. Okay, so I won't be showing you video from this one for a lot of reasons. Okay, and reasons I don't even feel like I should have to explain to you. There's just there's a million of them why I can't and won't. And um, but you know the kind of folks when I say the word cartel, right? Like you know what I mean. Is it in Tahiti? Were we on the Nile long, long ago? Uh, the cartel, you know, anything come to mind when I say that immediately, especially if you watch my channel or Disturb Reality. Okay, cool. Just making sure we're all on the same page then. So we all know that TikTok sucks, right? It's a cesspool. It's a piece of shit. It's what it is. But in a way, there's some gold on there. I found some entertaining shit on TikTok. And for a lot of content creators, it's a good medium to advertise as well as just kind of shit posts or answer questions. I got that idea from Wendigoon um, just to answer questions on there. And it was pretty cool. You can follow me on TikTok if you want to. You know where to find my links. Uh, look for my backup right now, though. My main, I'm trying to appeal that. I got mass reported. I'm too controversial for that shit. But, you know, there's a lot of weird racy stuff on there, too. But, you know, we can talk about it another time. But in that cesspool of just toxic humans and, like, the worst of the worst of the Gen Z populace, you don't really think cartel, do you? I mean, would you? Well, I get tagged in all sorts of stuff, and, you know, I kind of owe TikTok a lot of thanks, too. Just one little extra shout-out to the horrible fucking platform, honestly. Uh, because I started covering a lot of the gore that went viral there that they did nothing about, and that's kind of what kicked off my YouTube. But I get tagged in some shit, and sometimes I really don't like it. Like the accounts run by the CJNG, for instance. Yeah, that's a thing. And it's a very surreal thing to watch when you see these guys in full tactical gear just driving around in Humvees, like, smoking. Uh, you hear just some fucking chill-ass Latin music. And then you see the CJNG patches, and you're like, oh, okay, this isn't some sort of just military video. No, it's not. Nope, it's not. Not at all. And that scares the hell out of me when I see that. I'm like, that is, that's just... Wow. Now, these videos don't tech really stay up there for very long. I almost said technically. They don't really stay up there long, typically. But they still pop up. And l let's dive into that a little more. So, yeah. TikTok recently removed the hashtags Cartel TikTok and Cartel Talk, etc. Because they do, in fact, have a very real presence on the social media platform. Formerly, TikTok was known as Musical.ly, which was an app primarily targeted towards kids. Now, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Arguably, one of the largest social media platforms ever. Yeah, okay, so it shouldn't really come as a surprise that the cartel is on there because, I mean, after all, they're, they're, they, they want you to know what they're doing. They, they don't really give a shit. They're not scared of you. It's really scary because, yes, they're using this to intimidate people like everywhere else, but also to recruit. That's right, the same guys that brought you the Guerrero Flaying, sponsored by Adidas, many dismemberments, beheadings, and actually fruit baskets, too, interacts on the same app with your nephew, who uses it to watch thick girls twerk in Minecraft build ideas. I too also like to use the app for those reasons, but that doesn't excuse, my, you know, anyone being exposed to such scary shit, because, I mean, just seeing them, it's like, it's like having the bad guy of, of, of like, a story show up in the hometown. It's, like, not something you want to see, uh... The cartel is fucking scary. I mean, they are. You can't say they're not. Anybody who says they're not is just a fucking edgy boy. There's some edgy boy on the internet. It's stupid to say. Because if they picked your ass up, like, I have seen videos. One of the videos I've seen before, uh, let's, let's go, let's go unscripted. And to tell you about this shit, I just remembered this. Okay, so there's a lot of videos on there. And now they're, they're not gore videos. From the cartel on there. Don't don't get it don't get it twisted. They're trying their best to behave on there. So you see a bunch of guys tactical gear, the whole nine assault rifles just go up to a 
like an F-150. It's just some sort of truck. I don't remember the exact make and model. Fuck you. I don't care. And they, uh, I think they're about to just spray it. I think I'm about to watch somebody die because I have seen a lot of people die on TikTok. Um, but no, they open the door and the man inside, the way he started screaming and crying, you would have thought that he saw his dick getting ripped off by a velociraptor in like the fifth dimension or like you would have thought that he was being flayed right then and there. Like it was fucking bad. I think he shit himself. I don't know what they were saying, but I guarantee it was bad because he worked for them. So I don't know what he was supposed to be doing, if he was supposed to be driving or scouting or I don't know what he does. But he got caught sleeping on the job and I don't imagine that they uh, handle that lightly. So, I mean, I've seen people get their eyeballs scooped out with a spoon just to send a message. But I've also seen shit like everything from guns to drugs to them hanging out in these mansions with like giant Nintendo Switch TVs and like beanbags. It's like some shit you'd see like everything in the front page of Wish, but of the highest quality. They have the gold plated guns. It's it's insane. It's it's like some crazy shit you'd like earn on Call of Duty. And that's where they're trying to get your attention. Like they'll show you their like the fucking massive villas and shit and these crazy ass pools. And of course, they're trying to recruit you in. And I mean, I'm not going to speak against the cartel, no siree. But I'll tell you what, I've seen the scary shit these people do. And it's a really scary life for those who choose to live it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. But again, like I've said, it, it should come to no surprise that they're using this to flex and intimidate. It's like the world's largest social media platform. And after all, they upload primarily their own gore videos. Rarely are they leaked from some other source. Uh, that happens. But a lot of the time, they just upload them to... I almost said YouTube. <clears throat> a lot of times they'll upload them to uh, Facebook uh, because Facebook takes fucking forever to handle anything. They let Ronnie McNutt sit up there for like, I forget how long. Off the top of my head, it was like a week. Uh, could have been three days. Uh, anything longer than like 15 minutes is probably just like unexcusable, but whatever. I don't own the platform, do I? Um, but yeah, that's typically where that goes around and then everyone else gets it. Once everyone else gets it, you know, it's out there. And I mean, just their general presence on the platform is scary enough, and that just earns them a place here on the iceberg now. And the reason they're on Tier 2 and this is here is because, well, it's, you know, there's no gore. Nobody just dying outright. At least that I know about. I haven't seen anything like that from them yet. But we all know what the cartel does, and we all know they're a terrifying fucking... They're, they're terrifying... They're terrifying groups, okay? So, don't need to excuse it. It rests here on Tier 2, and it is what it is. So let's move on to something um, really fucking gross. All right, now, I don't care how this makes you feel. I know it's gross. We all know it's gross. It's upsetting, we know. But I do not condone the harassment of any individuals or entities implied, mentioned, or anything in this. Don't fucking harass people. It's a legal disclaimer to protect my ass, but you all know how this is. I, we, you know, we can't... These people have already been doxxed, and there's been nothing found that's even worth calling the cops for. Uh, it's uh, because of technicalities, though, mind you. It, it, the, what, what this topic is about is very fucking gross. It, it, you should know this if you know the name already. Zooier than thou. Again, just to reiterate that disclaimer, we do not condone the harassment of any individuals implied, mentioned, or in any aspect of this topic or this video, or in any way, shape, or form, and neither do my associates. Don't harass people, I mean plain and simple, and the information all here and everything I've used in this video and everything viewed and obtained is all public information. It's weird how the law protects these kinds of people though, huh? Zooier Than Thou is a nightmare-inducing reality of exploiting the terms of service on multiple platforms because they are active and it's a podcast promoting bestiality. Yes, fucking animals. Zoo files. It is a zoo file podcast and I believe their primary base is YouTube as well as their own weird uh, like URL they have to run it. Um, yeah, they also have a Twitter account too and some other stuff. You can find that all on your own if you want to view this horrible shit. But it's a podcast. It started in... I don't even fucking know or care. Um, but I believe it originated on YouTube, like I said, because yes, they are active and still claim innocence and purity because they don't actually fuck the animals. Now, I mean, 
people have made videos about them previously and I didn't feel like diving so deep into this topic to where it becomes its own 40 minute video. Uh, maybe we could talk about zooier, zooier than that another time, but really in, from what I found, there's not a whole lot. Uh, there's of course a lot of implied sex with animals because that is basically what they're trying to glorify and normalize to begin with. Allegedly. Seriously, I gotta say shit, and whatever, take it as you will. Allegedly, that's the case. The psychology of this is pretty interesting, though, because when I did my Peter Scully documentary, I went over a lot of famous uh, child predators, uh, ones who were in involved heavily in her core in the dark web, and their psychology was, oh, well, we, since we just watched the material and trade it, you know, we're innocent and pure. It's not like we actually touched anyone or whatever it, or hurt anybody. And that's fucking sick. Now, mind you, those are people who work side by side with Peter Scully. I mean, digitally, but still directly spoke to him and worked with him. So yeah, just just keep that in mind. Now, again, I'm not accusing anyone of, every, of anything. I'm just uh, giving my two cents as to comparing statements, if you will, for people that I definitely disagree with. But this podcast is quite literally what I said. It discusses what is deemed as normalcy and the perils of being a zoo. Yes, remember Kenneth Pinion? You know, the guy that Big Dick killed accidentally, but still, he died from fucking a horse. Uh, that guy, Kiro the Wolf, which people who know who that is, <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. People who obviously struggle so greatly with their oppression. You know, what the fuck, man? I'm gonna fucking puke. Fuck these people. Fuck Kiro the Wolf. Fuck Kenneth Pinion. And uh, fuck Zooier than thou. And fuck any of you if you fuck animals or you're a zoo. Seriously, fuck you. Now, there is a difference between being a furry and a zoo. Uh, now, typically a lot of zoo files are also furries. And I guess just because animals and the weird sexual thing with animals, that's how they connect it. But that doesn't mean everybody who's a furry is a zoo file. That is not true. Even if you don't like them, that doesn't make them one thing or the other. So don't be rude. I hit something. No, I'm not a furry. Uh... I'm, I'm not that talented because you got to kind of be like a real good fucking hands-on artist to make those kind of costumes and shit. I can't do that. That's purely the reason why, guys. No, it's just not me. I'm more of in that edgy dark, like, it's not a phase, mom, even though I'm still, like, in the phase. It's not a phase. I'm almost 30. So the owner was actually doxxed by Kiwi Farms, allegedly, a while ago. And he hasn't been found to be in any connection to any zoo Zeta stuff, which, you know, we'll talk about that stuff more later and Kiro the Wolf, and how he's connected to that. Furries are complicated too, like just saying, because I know I have fans out there that are furries, but not total fucking weirdos. But there are some fucking weirdos, and a lot of them happen to fucking hurt animals. I mean, so do people who kill people. That's even scarier too. And if you're really going to question why is this on the iceberg, I'm going to question you as to like, really, why? Why do you need a reason? It's the rationalization and publicized sensationalism of trying to fuck animals and bring that into a societal norm. That's pretty weird. Uh, that's something that is definitely not safe for life. That is fucking horrible and very abusive to said animals, as well as disgusting. Raping animals is cool to them, and it's really chilling just because they pitter around the terms of service with wordplay of various platforms they're allowed to remain on there, despite their themes literally being as I previously discussed. And that's really, really, really bad, okay? If I, if I need to explain that to you, you have some issues to work out yourself. That's fucking horrible and gross, just so nasty. And literally, as far as zooier than thou goes, specifically, it seems their goal, if they have one, is to quite literally normalize zoophilia, bestiality, whatever you want to fucking call it. And so much so that they believe that they should be part of the LGBTQ+. Uh, Blows my fucking mind. You remember Maps when they tried that too? Yes. <laughs> uh, what was it? Not uh, I forget what the term is, but they were like a non-offending pedophile wanted to be part. Of, they want to normalize it to make it a sexuality, and obviously that's not acceptable. No one's accepting zoos either. Sorry, fuck that. Believe it or not, um, Twitter had a recent crackdown on these kinds of people as well because um, it became such a big thing with Maps, and. A lot of hashtags got removed. That's pretty much how TikTok handles it, too. And necrophiliacs, even, were trying to normalize um, that. What a world we live in, huh? Humans are filth. This is nasty. I hate these people. Holy shit, man. Wow.
Tier 2. You have no idea. Some of you know. Some of you know a lot, but I know and some of you know don't. It's getting it bad. So mental health is a serious and sadly still horrendously understated and underaddressed issue, not just in the United States, but worldwide. And m most countries in the world, seriously, like they don't. <laughs> most don't give a shit. So that's why I always include the phone number in my description if you're feeling suicidal or know someone who, it, who is. You, you can call that number and it's the suicide hotline, guys. I leave that there for people who need it. And I know it's something small that anybody could access, but it's just a gesture of awareness because it, it's so horrible that people have to go through those thoughts. Um, and when I cover cases that involve that, they, that involve someone taking their life, I would say I try to delegate more care and I don't crack jokes if and it, as many, if any at all, to my knowledge, because it's just something different. And especially when these topics involve self-harm and again like i said suicide according to the cdc suicide is the 10th leading cause of death in the united states for all ages and approximately 130 americans die by suicide every single day so that's fucking that's a haunting statistic in itself firearms are the most commonly used method so most would think that a shotgun would be the most efficient right like the guaranteed like your head's gone right right no. Wrong. Regardless of the area of the head that it's used on, it, mm, mm, not always. Statistically speaking, there's only an 87% success rate with a gun of any type, including a shotgun. It's because you have to literally take out a certain part of your brain, like a very few specific parts of your brain, instantly to make it an instantaneous death. And uh, doing what I, have, I do now for so long, you learn a lot of horrifying things about the human body and how things work. I mean, if you're interested in it anyway, you do. And that's how I'm getting better at describing how these people are dying in these gore videos and the technicalities of what they're feeling, you know, how quick they die. And I'm no doctor, you know, I'm no certified expert. It's just, you know, you learn things. And man, I kind of wish I didn't learn about this. So of course, you know, a lot of factors go into play if someone survives, you know, where they shoot, the build of the person, the type of round used, the type of gun used. But uh, problem is, other than the pandemic of depression and suicidal individuals, those attempting to take their lives and they often think they know what they're doing and they're so sure of it, they just want the pain to go away. And this results in them surviving the attempt. And sometimes that's worse than succeeding, at least for individual trying with a shotgun. There are literal compilations of, quote, suicide fail videos and images because of so many attempts of, in various ways, just including shotguns, like just pure videos of all shotguns. And a few clips that come to mind are these, and this one, I assume, is from Russia because of its insanity and the snow, you know. It shows a man who tried the shit in his car, okay? I mean, Russia, you guys are fucking nuts. and Don't fight me on it. I can't find background on it. He tries this in his car, and yes, a shotgun, and ended up looking like a mob from fucking Resident Evil. And it, it's crazy. His lower jaw is completely obliterated, and so is most of his face, just flesh dripping and flopping around. Like, I cannot believe the man was alive. And by the way, conscious. The clip is short and it cuts to him being treated fully conscious and lucid by the way oh god talking paramedics are, are treating him in an ambulance it's really fucking gross and really weird uh, i can't even believe that's real uh, i'm looking at pictures of it right now just some screens of it the clip is short being around 35 seconds or so and i'm unsure of its exact backstory like i said and i'm unsure if that's the full clip because of that i don't really know the best way to find more on it it doesn't really matter it reminds me of like the demi gorgon diving accident so like i said it reminds me of the demi gorgon diving accident um i can't find the clip right now i thought i saved it but i guess i did not hold on let me double check i did find another one and i'll be perfectly honest i don't know 100 percent if it was a shotgun uh, regardless of the gunshot wound, really nasty stuff. Hold on. First, let's check to see if I got 
this one. I thought I did, like, in preparation. My chair squeaking, by the way. In preparation for this iceberg, but... Okay, I guess I don't have it on hand. It doesn't really matter. It's not that video in particular. It's the fact, like, the subject matter surviving a suicide attempt with a shotgun. And we're going to watch this one, though. Um, and I swear, it's all the time they're conscious. I could not imagine I would be so far, like... Holy shit. Like, ugh. Oh, I thought that was them shrieking for a second. Medical stuff, I can't understand. Holy shit, man. There's like no face. Half their face is gone, but like completely just gone. See the tongue? Holy shit, man. Yeah, it's like split right here. Straight down the center almost. Just this side of his face just destroyed in like a pool, like a salsa bowl. Holy shit. And that was it, 53 seconds long. Woo! I, I don't know if anybody can translate any of that, but be uh, feel free to. The subject matter in itself is what's really terrifying here, is the fact that th this is more common than you'd think. A lot more common than you'd think. And I got the story here of the guy, I, I believe is the guy who in Russia who... Uh, the clip I'm looking for. Uh, it, I could be wrong. It could be completely unrelated. But he looks kind of like him. And oh my god. Like I need. I'm going to have to get the pictures here to show everybody. Uh, face blast. <laughs> That's what the news headline says. And you guys bitch about the things I say. Man blows off jaw and nose with a shotgun. But survives. After trying to kill himself over money troubles. Yeah. Holy shit. Like he just looks like like a corgi's ass like it's like it's horrible how the fuck somehow missed his brain the incident took place in the town of kotelniki near moscow on february 16th of this year i'll check the date when this is uh i'll check the date in a minute when like I'm done with reading this. Russian media say he left his home around 4 a.m., taking his registered shotgun, charged with numerous small lead pellets with him. The man spent several hours driving around his town in a rented car, according to the reports. At one point, he stopped the vehicle, put his shotgun between his legs, aimed the muzzle at his chin, and fired, investigator said. Yeah, then, yeah, it sounds like that guy. It's interesting that you'll find gore videos, and then you're like, oh, God, it's like so haunting, no context, whoa, and then you find the news report for it. It's, it's so weird. The shot completely destroyed Vladimirov's face, but somehow missed his brain, and that is what saved his life, says the local media. Oh, uh, yeah, how, how lovely. I'm sure he's happy. Suffering from traumatic shock, Vladimirov got out of the car and was spotted by a female commuter who happened to go past on the scene. The terrified woman called emergency for services. <laughs> Several surgeries to restore his facial bones, used a shotgun in a bid to take his own life. Yeah, it kind of looks like the car, too, just from what I can see here. A video filmed at the scene by a witness showed Vladimir off with a bloody mask instead of a face sitting in the driver's seat of his rented car. Yeah, this is the guy. His jaw and nose were completely blasted off. Bloody chunks of flesh hung from his face instead of cheeks, and he couldn't talk. He was making painful moo-like sounds. If I can find it, I'll see what I can do. It's really gross really messed up it's really sad that that's actually like a livable experience and that's why it's on here if you i highly don't recommend googling this shit but easy like easy you will know why it's where it is and you might be surprised it's only on tier two. Oh man the things that we have to dive into starting just on three three we start getting some real heavy shit too oh man Actually, with three, we literally get into some heavy shit. Gooso milk's on there. <laughs> oh, man. That one's nasty. All right, let's see what else we got here, though. I think that's enough of uh, taking your life with a shotgun. Very depressing. 
I hope that this uh, part of this video actually deters people from suicide. If Again, if you need any help with that, please contact a professional. Please contact your family. Speak to somebody. Speak out. And if you suspect one of your loved ones or one of your friends is suicidal or depressed, please reach out as well. The hotline's in my description. It's really easy. And it's uh, worth saving someone's life rather than taking the risk. <clears throat> so let's move on to the final entry of Tier 2. So a lot of people fear planes. Statistically speaking, though, you're more likely to die in a car crash than actually to be in a plane crash. Even though that you probably won't be in a plane crash, it doesn't mean that planes don't crash, because they definitely do. But just wait till we get further down the iceberg and we start talking about... Uh, well, you'll see. For airlines, the military, and plane companies probably more than anybody... Uh, and probably more people, it's kind of important to know what the fuck happened that made the plane crash in the first place, you know? Like, that's something that they would need to know. So that's where black boxes come in. And you probably already know what a black box is, but really quick, I'm going to explain, like, in brief what it is for those of you who do not know. So the widespread use of aviation recorders didn't begin until post-World War II. Uh, since then, the recording medium of black boxes has evolved in order to log much more information and how a plane operates and more. A lot more, actually. The Boeing 787 black boxes, for example, can hold up to a terabyte of data for each flight. Commercial planes nowadays are obviously hooked up with, like, four microphones and stuff, so they listen to the crew and all the ambient sounds in the cockpit, so they gotta listen for all the switches flipping and all that fun stuff. So every fart, every time someone overshared, it's all there in the recording. But that also means that that includes plane crashes, including the 9-11 plane crashes and much more. More horrendous things have been recorded. And there's transcripts of all that, all online. And there used to be tons of sites that hosted these audio files as well as their stories, and I can't really find them anymore. And I thought it was planecrashinfo.com, which we'll talk about that in a minute. We're actually going to visit that one. Um, but due to a lack of audio files at hand, I decided to include tailstrike.com on the iceberg, and I thought that actually had the audio files, but in short, it's just the transcripts. So instead, we are going to look at planecrashinfo.com, um, just because it has a little more eerie, organized way of presenting things. I feel it's better. So we're going to take a look at that and look at some of the transcripts and stuff. Okay. So this whole website has a whole collection of aviary ac aviation aviary aviation accidents, and this one is early as December twenty seventh. Holy shit! Look at that. And it explains what happened and stuff. But they have like a hundred worst. Number one. Number one. Two thousand nine hundred and seven dead. Oh. Yeah. I wonder which one that was. God damn. That's... See, the audio for these things is available, and maybe I'll include a few snippets towards the end of this or something, or somewhere in there. But, like... Holy shit, that was the remains of the other plane? <laughs> Just disintegrated? What's the second worst? 1977? 583 dead... Canary Islands, Pan Am. Oh, whoa, what the fuck? What happened? Second worst aviation disaster in history, which killed a total of 583 people, collided with... Oh, but they collided. Jeez. Fuck. Ugh. That's sad that there's like a... 100, like a top 100. Massachusetts. I swear I saw that in there. Yeah, there it is. Na off Nantucket. Fuck, man. This wasn't all I wanted to see, though. Um, I wanted to look into some of the transcripts because this is what they did not say for life for me was the aspect of just knowing the last words and stuff. And they literally have a last word section here. Disturbing to some individuals, discretion is advised. Don't cancel the site. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. 
what? September 11th. Text in parentheses was translated from Arabic. Oh, okay. That's fucked up. So right in the morning, 931. Ladies and gentlemen, here the captain. Please sit down and keep remain, remaining seating. We have a bomb on board, so sit. Calling Cleveland Center, you're unreadable. Don't move, shut up. Come on, come, shut up. Yeah, it's a whole transcri a transcript of the whole hijacking for 9-11. That's a good, uh, horrifying thing. Unintelligible. All is the greatest. the fuck did they do oh they start screaming i haven't heard the uh actual audio in a while so polish air force 2010 fuck <laughs> oh my god this kind of dark but <laughs> it's like fuck i mean shit what else would you say though god damn We're going to be in the Hudson. I rely on God. Okay, yeah. How'd that work out? Like, it's pretty creepy. Now, I... Wait, what happened? No claim copyright of the audio files on this page. So, is where is the audio, then? Hold on. We'll see if we can hear. Fuck! Oh, it's just connected to the U. The okay, it's connected to the YouTube. So this is the Polish Air Force. Fuck! Voice recording. Oh, with English subtitles. Ahead. Terrain ahead. I imagine Pull that's the plane's like audio. Pull up. Pull up. Terrain ahead. Terrain ahead. Pull up. Pull up. What was happening? The fuck was that? Someone we got like a Twitch donation in there? Like You can hear the fucking fear. Like that's right. That's scary as shit. Uh okay, so there is the audio. So we'll play these as I go too. That made this a whole lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be, to be honest with you. I was kind of improvising, like, fuck, okay, well, what do I do? Let's see, let's see. Let's see. Okay, going to really find too much uh, interesting stuff in there, and uh, I have to say. Oh god, apparently that's what happens when you're shot down with a fucking missile. There's literally nothing there. Oh my god. That had people in it. Overruns the runway. Oh. I was looking for like 2010 to present, like something relevant to us, you know. Uh, there's like nothing. Oh my god. Ooh. The first plane fatality in history. Oh, surprise. The bed sheet iron like PVC pipe thing didn't run. Man, amazing. Can you imagine the first passenger planes? Actually, here we go. The fuck was it? A kite? The fuck? Hmm. 
So I guess that's it for this one. I thought that I had a, lo a more loaded topic here because there used to be much more sites. There must have been a legal thing that happened, and a lot of these are very interesting to do have the recordings. Uh, if I do have some, I'll record them. I mean, yeah, I'll record them. I'll go back in time. No, I'll add them right here. Uh, like, probably starting uh, right now. Let's just say if I find three of them that are really disturbing, these are my uh, top three most not safe for life uh black box cockpit report uh recordings let's just say if i find three of them this is my top three uh most not safe for life black box recordings or cockpit recordings however you want to say the funny words it's like however you ever want to say it it sounds funny but it's all horrible so enjoy And well, that was it for my ultimate not safe for life iceberg tier two. Thank you so much for joining me. And if you're here on Patreon early again, thank you so much for supporting me and be on the lookout for some more exclusive videos. I got some in the works and I got some more coming for YouTube as well. I've been on the grind and working hard on a lot of stuff and look forward to seeing you guys on tier three. And if you're on YouTube, thank you for your patience, of course, and your support. Be sure to check out all those links and follow me down below on all my other social media so you can get updates on, well, pretty much everything I do. Watch my shit posts and see stupid pictures and dumb things I like on Twitter and all that other stuff. But if you don't know me already, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not even going to do all that. This is an outro. Thank you so much for watching, whether you're on Patreon, YouTube. I appreciate you greatly. Thank you so much. And I look forward to narrating this horrible mess on tier three. <laughs> Seriously, though, thanks for watching. Come and take my hand